Hi, welcome to Just in Canada and our continuing series on Canada's social change makers. My name is Justin Douglas and today I'm here with Jessica Dolan. Jessica is an American by birth, but she's been living and studying in Canada for quite some time now. She's doing her PhD in anthropology at McGill University. She is an educator, a public speaker, and a published author. So her areas of expertise lie in the relationship between human beings and the natural world. So thanks for being here today, Jess. Thank you for having me. So uh, today's topic is going to be a little bit about the environment and environmentalism. So to start our conversation, why don't you give us just a bit of uh, an overview of your research and what it is exactly that you're working on. Uh, my career focuses on the, um, studying uh, traditional ecological knowledge um, for the purpose of protecting and regenerating biocultural diversity in the world and also f uh, on advocating and educating for indigenous sovereignty um, and human rights and peace. Over the last six years, um, I decided to research uh, Haudenosaunee environmental knowledge. The Haudenosaunee are the, um, the Iroquois Confederacy, of which consists of the, the six nations, the Mohawks, Oneidas, Onondagas, Cayugas, Senecas, and Tuscaroras. Um, and I wanted to look at Haudenosaunee relationships with land as a kind of traditional ecological knowledge. Um, I decided to do this because I, I believe that um, indigenous knowledge is, uh, is really critical knowledge for the world to learn um, at this juncture in time. Um, the, and the values in there for peace and sustainability are, are critical for this time. Uh, my research shows that uh, Haudenosaunee environmental knowledge is indeed a distinct uh, knowledge system and value system and it, that's critical to the Haudenosaunee and that it's also invaluable for the rest of the world to try to understand. And then also um, my, my role as a non-native researching uh, the subject, I found that and I believe demonstrated that um, if someone like myself who's committed um, can understand s such a, a depth of their culture and values and um, indigenous law, then people who are decision makers like um, public servants and politicians and leaders and developers can also under endeavor to understand it and respect uh, Haudenosaunee sovereignty. Um, so I've been incredibly fortunate. I've had the, what I consider to be the best teachers across the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and also at McGill University. What are some of your impressions right now about the state of environmental protection in Canada? Um, well, there's some uh, big issues that are Canada-specific as well as international issues. I'd say that um, some of the biggest ones that Canada faces are climate change with the melting of the, um, the ice in the north, uh, fresh water with the removal of protection on, on many of the fresh waterways in Canada, and there's so much fresh water in Canada. Um, waste management and remediation in terms of um, human waste, but also waste from industrial activities. Uh, the oil sands, I think, is one of the biggest issues that um, crystallizes, it, it synthesizes and crystallizes many issues, but it really, really points toward um, the boreal forest and the importance of the boreal forest and the importance of protecting the boreal forest. Um, which is a tremendous carbon sink that's important not only for Canada and North America, but for the world. Maybe for Canadians who don't know about the boreal forest, could you just give them a little bit more? Okay, I wish I knew the geographic coordinates, no, but the boreal okay. forest is um, one of the largest forests in the world, and it's located beneath the tundra um, and across Canada and it is huge. And when we think about Canada, the majority of the population is clustered right by the border to the US. Um, and then uh, above that, you have the boreal forest. And um, much boreal forest, uh, it, it creates oxygen because of the va its vastness and um, all of the trees. And then it also sequesters carbon in the, um, in the ground, in the sphagnum moss and all of that. So with the um, oil sands, 
with the clear cutting of, of all of that moss and trees, you're releasing the carbon into the atmosphere um, that, is, that the forest naturally protects due to its own ecology. Um, so to me, that, that is a tremendous um, issue for the whole world. Um, because the, the boreal forest is um, protecting our climate just as much as the Amazon is. It's very important. I don't think most Canadians are aware of that statistic at all. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit my own uh, ignorance on this because I didn't know that it was equivalent to the Amazon rainforest. And that's something that we as Canadians should know about and want to protect. So I think a lot of times uh, Canadian mainstream media sort of makes this dichotomy between either the economy and fossil fuels or environmental protection. And it's usually one or the other, but not both. Are there ways that we can maybe get past that narrative? Are there ways that we can protect our environment and still be an economically progressive functioning economy? In terms of balancing economy and environment, we're at a very exciting time. And um, to me, this is especially interesting because I believe that um, movements of indigenous peoples have brought this issue um, to the forefront. Um, and we're now moving into a time that scholars and scientists and many people are calling the Anthropocene. We've moved out of the Holocene and into the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is characterized as an epic um, wherein humans have unprece unprecedented impact on the environment. We are now the dominant species on the earth. Indigenous peoples have brought to global attention the interconnection between economy and en environment. So a, a, a core indigenous value is that um, humans are located within the environment, we're completely dependent upon the environment, our economy is completely dependent upon the natural world, and that we should live within our means. What is the dish with one spoon philosophy? That's, um, that's a, a value that is in the great law of peace. It's about the interconnection between peace, economy, and environment. And it essentially says that for people to live in, um, in balance with each other in the natural world and in peace, sharing um, within means is, is necessary. So in, um, in, the, in the belt you have the dish, which symbolizes the sustenance that the natural world provides. And then you have the spoon, which is shared amongst peoples. And the spoon, it's a spoon because, and not a knife or a fork, to emphasize the peace part, because if it were a knife or a fork, then people might be struggling over resources and territory. So I think um, this, this uh, attention to the balance between economy and environment and living and health and peace is um, part of it's one of the values of the Haudenosaunee that's very appealing to the mainstream um, and to environmentalists. This whole conversation is really meant to be an introduction to people about environmental topics and some of the important things to consider. So thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I think that in the future, hopefully we'll have a lot more to talk about and I'm sure you'll be back again as a contributing guest on some of our round tables, uh, which I really look forward to. But in the meantime, thank you so much for being here today and hopefully Canadians will have a lot more to think about over the next little while. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Justin. Thanks. <laughs>